Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. If you've been around my channel at all, you'll know that I love to talk about heroes and that the reason I created this channel was to talk about heroes and the reason I called it the fourth age is because the fourth age is the age of heroes. And I ran across something this weekend which seems to just kill the idea of heroes in comic books. Certainly in Marvel comics. And I would say that Marvel is just the one that's the most out there, the most visible. All the rest of the companies are like Marvel. And the thing that I ran across was a podcast called Marvel Voices, which was focusing on Marika Tamaki. And she is currently the writer of X-23. She was previously the writer of Jennifer Walters' She-Hulk, where she was moping around and watching cooking shows all the time. That's Marika Tamaki. Now, the thing is that she gives a really unique perspective to things, because she's a far leftist, just like all the rest, but she's Canadian. And she really has a unique perspective in expressing these far leftist ideas and it's it's very odd and it answers a lot of questions it not only i think kills the idea of hero what she says but it answers a lot of questions like why in the world do all these well as richard over at diversity in comics says why do these people not human very well all these writers at marvel why when they're on twitter do they have this persona all the time why can't they just be people and it answers that question and it also answers the question why would these people why do they write like it's i don't know from a television show it's dialogue from a television show you know they are writing like they're watching like you're watching buffy the vampire slayer 1990 whatever or gilmore girls or something why do they write like that why do they write dialogue like that? And I think this interview answers that question as well. So it gives a lot of unique perspectives in that kind of way. And I think it's because she's Canadian, because the thing is that it's it's really weird. I actually have a lot more respect for Marika Tamaki after listening to this. Um, in a certain way, I have much more respect for her. In another way, I have much less respect for her. I didn't know very much about her before. I really just knew her work in comics, and I didn't have much respect for that because I have large issues with the way she tells stories and how she uses her characters and things like that. But at the very least, when I got to listen to this, she's very genuine. You know, the rest of these comic writers, they all seem like they're hypocrites. And I can't abide a hypocrite, but Marika Tamaki seems genuine. And at the same time, she seems to have a genuine respect for both the comic book characters, the comic book that she's working on, the company that she's working for, the editor that she's working with, the people that she's collaborating with, you know, the artists. She wants to actually do a good comic book. She actually wants to write a good story. She tries, and she's genuinely trying, and she's genuinely respectful. But that's what makes this so sad. Because after having listened to what she has to say, I can say that no matter how hard she tries, no matter how much respect she has for this genre, she will never write a good comic book superhero. Now, she might write other good kinds of comic books. She's written graphic novels of other kinds, and they're critically acclaimed. I don't know how much I want to put on that, but I think she could write something like a Love and Rockets, and that would be okay. But she can't write, and I don't think she ever will be able to write a good comic book superhero. And that's the thing. You know, sometimes you look at these SJW kind of writers and think, eh, they might get better later if they get out of this kind of idea. Maybe they'll be a good writer one day. But after having listened to this podcast, I think that Marika Tamaki is a write-off. You don't even need to bother checking in every year or so to see if she's improved. She will never write a good comic book superhero. And here's the thing. Like I said, she has a very unique perspective. I think it's because she's Canadian. But it's weird to try. I'll try to explain this to people who are not, you know, who never really spend any time in Canada. Um, you know, in the States, you have your Republican Party, who is conservative, and your Democratic Party, which is liberal. And in Canada, you have an actual conservative party, so-called, and you have a liberal party. And the thing is that if you put all those four parties on the right-left scale, the funny thing is that the Canadian Conservative Party would probably be left of the American Democratic Party. That's the kind of political atmosphere you get in Canada. And so she grew up in this political atmosphere. And 
Whereas in the States, you have your, you know, your two coasts, which are liberal and your center, which is conservative in Canada, you have city mouse and country mouse, you know, the city people are very liberal, leftist even sometimes, and your country people are conservative. That's generally the way it goes. And she grew up in Toronto, which is the biggest city there is in Canada. So on top of, you know, growing up in Canada, which is fairly liberal itself, she grew up in Toronto, which is more than just liberal, I would say very far leftist in some ways. And so like I said, she's genuine in what she actually says because she believes this in the core of her being. This is what she grew up breathing. And so she doesn't know anything else. So she genuinely believes all that she says when she talks about these leftist points. And she felt like she was an outsider all of her life. And then she got into university and the far leftists got a hold of her. And she eventually ended up taking a what is a master's in women's studies and that's just cultural marxism so they got their hooks into her and convinced her that everybody is an outsider now the far leftists would convince you of that because they want to obliterate the idea that there's any kind of human nature or that there's any nature in anything at all even nature itself or reality that there is any set rules in any kind of reality let alone the human being just because well if there's any rules outside, then your far leftist can't do what he principally wants to do, which is, I want to do what I want to do, I'll do it when I want to do it, how I want to do it. If there's any outside rules, that's going to infringe upon that, therefore no outside rules. So they obliterate any idea of any kind of rules, either being a human nature or even in reality itself. And so everything's just a big old mix of what dynamic movement, nothing's ever set right and so this is the kind of mindset that she has and she genuinely believes this kind of mindset and it's it's really weird to listen to her talk about some of her experiences and i believe that these far leftist ideas they stunt the growth of people you know your intellectual growth your your mental and emotional growth it just stunts you and it stunts you to a level i would say of high school and Marika Tamaki comes out and says this fairly well here when she talks about she went to a high school to do a what a talk of some sort right and she said she thinks that everybody now notice she thinks that everybody when they go back to high school for something they automatically just turn back into that high school kid with all their little neuroses and everything else just come flooding back and when I listened to that I thought to myself that is the saddest thing I've heard in a while you really actually believe that everyone is like that? Because honestly, an actual grown up, you know, you grow up, you actually get some confidence in yourself and you know who you are. And I remember going back to my high school seven or eight years after I was in high school and I looked around and I thought, wow, this place is small. It's so insignificant compared to who and what I am right now. And really, I would say that's the confidence of growing up but these people don't get the confidence of growing up they can't actually build themselves as a person because there's nothing to build with you know there's no focal point since there's no human nature everything's always in constant flux you know they get stuck in this one point in history which is sort of your high schoolish kind of time because that's the time where you're playing around with your personality to see where you want it to go so I'm going to read you just a couple of short quotes from this podcast to show you the kind of things that I've been talking about and what the answers are to those questions I had at the first. So here's one of the quotes that she gives. She says, Identity is something that you do all the time, every day. Nobody is essentially anything. You're not essentially a woman or a man. There are various things that you have collectively over the years put into your performance of who you are that you curate and think about and then do which everybody everywhere is doing all the time and that process of doing that thing of doing who you are and sort of struggle when that person doesn't make sense and when it hits up against various obstacles in society or internal obstacles things like that is what I love to write about okay so she talks again after that 
about the performance of who you are. And she truly believes, she truly believes that this is what every human being is. She truly believes that nobody is essentially anything. That nobody has any kind of human nature at all. Nobody is essentially anything. And that all you do all the time, every day, and everyone else does, is just perform who you are. You're not actually something. You're just actually performing a skit all the time. A play. You're just performing all the time. And she believes this is what everybody does all the time. So to go back to those questions that I talked about at the first of the video, you know, this is why, if this is true, and she truly believes this, and this is what the others actually believe. And by the way, the interviewer just completely agrees with her on this, completely. And she works at Marvel as well. If this is the kind of mindset of these SJWs, well, that's why they act like that on Twitter. That's why they can't human very well. That's why they have these personas that they set out there. Because, like her, they believe that everything they do is just a performance. They don't actually, they're not actually an individual. You know, they're essentially made up of nothing. They're just play acting all the time. And that's why they have this persona, especially online. And, you know, as Richard says, you know, these people, they stick their finger up in the air, see which way the wind is blowing, and they go that way. And these people, they think that that's the way that everybody does everything all the time through their entire lives. That's all life is made up of. So that's what they do. And they put on a play all the time. They put on a persona all the time. And that would answer the question why they do that. And it also answers the question why they would talk in ways that sounds like it's from a 1990s show. Why? Because the people on the show, they're just giving a performance too. So that's no different from anybody else in society since everybody's life is essentially nothing and you're just giving a performance and the people on the screen are just giving a performance they're the exact same thing the exact same thing you know they're just tiny little bit different in that the person writing the lines for the person who is performing on television is not the same whereas you as a person individual you know you are creating your own lines and then performing them so there's virtually no difference between a person living their life and someone on television. That's why they think they can use television speak all the time. That's why they write like that all the time. Because she believes that this is the way that people are. That television and real life are just the exact same thing. It's just a performance all the time. And again, I would say this is the stunted growth of being a far leftist, that since they can't actually build themselves up as a human being, as a confident person, they never get past this point, and they never actually can see anything but this little performance. And that's why they write like they do. And that's why Marika Tamaki specifically writes like she does. Because since they believe this, they pick the two things that they know the best as the basis for their writing. Number one, themselves. Number two, the television that they watch, because they spend so much time watching television. Those are the two things that they know. Marika Tamaki goes on and on in this little podcast itself about, well, people ask me, why is this happening in the book? And it's only happening in the book because, well, it's what I do in my normal life. You know, the whole thing about Jennifer Walters watching cooking shows. She specifically says, well, it's just what I do. So I put it in the book. That's all she did. And she also goes on about, you know, the fact that you talk about what they didn't say. Because in her family, there was a lot of things they didn't say. Which is terribly confusing to anybody who's not her. So she takes her life and the life of the people that she knows the best outside of herself, which is the people she sees on television, and uses those for the basis of her writing. Which is a terribly, terribly bad way to write, if you ask me. But I want to move on to the second quote, which is a little more important, but I had to go through that one to get to it. And the other quote is this. She's talking about, well, she can't even say the word hero when she talks about this. She says, 
I think this kind of notion of good guy, bad guy, well, it's kind of complicated. I think this idea now of who ends up on what side, it's more of a freelance situation. It's like, well, right now we're working for you guys, but ultimately we're working for ourselves. The center of it is, I look out for me. I look out for my sisters, my family, and how that works out when you're making decisions. So this is her idea of good guy, bad guy, of hero and villain. There is no difference. These people, these characters that she writes, she's saying that it's just like a freelance situation. A good guy can be a bad guy. A bad guy can be a good guy. It's just like a freelance situation. You know, you could be good now and bad later. It doesn't matter. You know, these people are just looking out for themselves anyways. Everybody just looks out for themselves. That's all they ever do. And therefore, sometimes they get called a hero. Sometimes they get called a villain. That's it. That's the way that she writes characters. And that kills the idea of hero kills it completely because as I'm always talking about you know go back to Aristotle who gave I would say the quintessential definition of what a hero is and he was working off of material for you know 800 10 1200 years before him so this has run through Western civilization for like 3,000 years and is still here a hero is someone who is more virtuous than you and virtue well you know that encompasses a lot of other ideas supporting it. It encompasses an idea of right and wrong, of good and bad. And it also encompasses an idea of a human nature that can interact with a scale of right and wrong. You know, but as we see, people like Marika Tamaki, you know, they don't believe that human beings are anything. She said quite specifically, no one is essentially anything, right? But if no one is essentially anything, then you don't have a human nature. You can't have something to grab onto that right and wrong. But they don't believe in right and wrong either. I mean, virtue, it's like that definition, I think, that Plato gave of honor. He said, honor consists in following the better. Right? And honor and virtue are very closely linked. You know, that simple definition, honor consists in following the better. Well, in order to actually follow the better, First, you have to know what is better and what is worse. And to know what is better and what is worse, you actually have to have a scale of what is better and worse. And that scale starts off with what is best. And so you have all these supporting ideas that you have to have these things in order to actually be a hero. You have to either have them innately, you don't have to understand them you know, intellectually, you can understand them almost in the back of your mind. A lot of heroes do. But there has to be that scale. There has to be, I have a human nature. It interacts with this scale of right and wrong. And we can disagree about what those things on the scale are, but we still believe that there's a scale. That's why, you know, I don't mind a lot of my viewers being liberal. Certainly not, because they're not far leftists, they're liberal. And I think me and a liberal could agree on a lot of things. Like there's a fundamental human nature of some kind. Like we would agree on the fact that human beings have inalienable rights. Stuff like that. You know, if a human being has inalienable rights, well, that means it is predicated on something within that human being which is fixed. Therefore, that human being has a nature of some kind. We might not agree what it is, but we can agree that it's there. Something like that. Or me and a liberal could agree on the fact that human beings are rational animals. You know, that's the old definition of what is a human being? He is a rational animal. Because we think that reason is a good thing and people are reasonable and it's good to be reasonable. We could say, look, people are reasonable human beings, are rational animals. We could agree on that. That's their nature. You know, but you have these far leftists. They don't agree that there's any nature whatsoever. They don't agree that there's any scale whatsoever to deal with. Whereas me, as a conservative and someone who is a liberal, we could, at the very least, argue about what the scale was, how it works, where it comes from, but we could agree that the scale is there. But the far leftists, they don't agree that there is any scale whatsoever. They obliterate the idea of scale. And if you obliterate the idea of scale, you can't have a scale of what's best. You can't have a scale of right and wrong. If you obliterate the idea of right and wrong, you can't have someone who is virtuous. You can't have someone who is virtuous. You can't have a hero. So when these people write super-powered beings, 
That's all that they are. They're not heroes. It doesn't matter if they're writing X-23 or Spider-Man. It's the same thing. We just call them superheroes now because that's what they used to be called, and the name stuck. But they're not writing superheroes anymore. Marvel does not write superheroes anymore. Marvel writes super-powered beings. That's it. There are no heroes there. And there are no heroes there because none of them have any idea. None of these writers have any idea of human nature. Marika Tamaki goes on and talks about things like, I tried to think of some trademark things of human beings. Not, you know, the way that human beings actually might exist, but there's some trademark things about being a human being. That's how her mind works. That's how she talks in this video. About this non-entity of human beings. About them being emptied of any kind of connection to anything. And that's that's not a way to write a hero. And the thing that I found the most disturbing was the fact that, well, the interviewer, who also works for Marvel, just agrees with her wholeheartedly on all of this. And it's not just nodding her head agreement. It's giving her own examples agreeing. And I see this not just in this little podcast, but in most of the Women of Marvel podcasts as well. Because they all agree. They all agree with each other. And it's not just nodding of the head. They all have the exact same idea. Which is funny, because Sana Amanat always says things like, I am looking for unique voices. Marvel is looking for unique voices. If you have a unique voice, we will find you and bring you into the Marvel fold. But these people, they don't have a unique voice at all. None of these people who work for Marvel that are on these podcasts have a unique voice at all. Now, they may be unique as compared to the rest of the country that they live in, but as compared with each other, they're all the exact same. The exact same. They're all, like Marika Tamaki, outsiders. They feel like they're outsiders, and the leftist ideas just got a hold of that feeling of being outsiders and just indoctrinated it into them that everybody's an outsider and nothing means anything. And they all just agree on this. Like, this is the way that all human beings actually work. And that there is no other way of actually existing that anybody who thinks differently is either ignorant or a hater. And there's no other perspective, there's no other way to think except for this. And everyone agrees on these points. And again, these points kill the idea of a hero. And I find that ultimately sad. So, if it gave you anything new to think about, hit like, hit the shield in the lower right hand corner of your screen to subscribe, and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about this. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.